guys, welcome to another week of What's That All About? And this week, we're going to continue talking about a specific fruit of the Spirit. For the past two videos, Miss Emily has been talking to us about love, about loving God and loving people. Well, today, we're going to continue on to a different fruit, probably my favorite fruit, which is joy. So what's joy all about? Is it the same thing as happiness? Like, can we be joyful and be mad? All great questions. And I hope we discover these things as we dive in. Well, to dive in, let's see what Jesus has to say. Well, in the Gospels, more specifically John chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus tells his disciples, I have told you all of these things so that you may have the same complete joy that I have. I want your joy to be the fullest joy. So where does joy come from? It comes from Jesus and all the things he tells us. And he tells us to accept his love, to remain in his love. And while we remain in his love, we need to love others and love God. So if we think about what Miss Emily has told us for the past two videos, we do all of those things. And when we continue to do those things, the next step is joy. So joy comes from the Lord. It's a gift from Jesus. And joy is like this light inside of us. It's a combination of peace and everything that's good in this world. It's like this little fuzzy feeling. That's what joy is. Well, now that we know what joy is and where it comes from, what should we do with that? Well, in Philippians, another book in the New Testament, Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And it's so important that he tells us that again. He says, rejoice. And rejoice means like bring up joy again, that we continue to choose joy. Whether we're happy or sad or goofy or mad, we continually and always choose joy. So is joy the same thing as happiness? Well, no, because I can be joyful while being happy and I can be joyful while being sad. It, doesn't matter what we're feeling as long as we choose joy. And guys, joy is so powerful. It changes our perspective and we can do the impossible when we choose joy and when we choose to focus on Jesus. And to show you guys this, I want to tell you guys my favorite story in the Bible involving probably my favorite disciple, Peter. So let me set the scene. So it's a dark and stormy night. There's thunder and there's lightning. And Peter and the rest of the disciples are in this boat. And they're trying to row to the other side. And it's so hard. Jesus isn't with them right now. He's off on a mountain praying. And so they're rowing and rowing and rowing. And then it's like three in the morning, okay? So it's like way past all of our bedtimes. And they look out into the water and they see the shadow walking on water and at first they think it's a ghost and they get all scared but Peter thinks that hey this might be Jesus so he calls out to the shadow and say hey if you truly are my Lord if you truly are Jesus call me onto the water with you let me walk with you and Jesus being the shadow is like yes Peter it's me come out onto the water with you and this is where joy comes in so I need you guys to focus in on this part so Peter chooses to focus on Jesus. He looks at Jesus, and when he looks at Jesus, he is filled with joy. He is filled with the Spirit. And he gets out of the boat, and he starts to walk. Now, it doesn't really describe this part in the Bible, but when I think about the story, I'm pretty sure Jesus is telling Peter, like, hey, don't pay attention to the storm. Don't pay attention to the lightning or the thunder or the waves. Pay attention to me. Look at me, Peter. Remember how much I love you. Remember that you love others. And as long as Peter was looking at Jesus, as long as he was filled with joy, he was able to do the impossible. He was able to walk on water. But later on in the story, Peter takes his eyes away from Jesus. He takes his focus away from Jesus. There may have been like a lightning strike or a wave was about to get to him. He looks away. Right when he looks away, that joy kind of leaves and he begins to sink. But don't worry about Peter though, because Jesus immediately comes in and saves Peter and brings him back onto the boat. And that part of the lesson is probably a story for another time, but let's focus back into that joy part. See, when Jesus focused, or when Peter focused on Jesus, he's able to do the impossible. He was able to stay afloat. 
So another way I wanted to show you guys is I brought some of my bath toys. Uh, they're a lot of fun. So right now, say this is us, okay? And we are filled with joy. When we are filled with joy, we're able to stand up straight and live life normally. But sometimes life gets a little crazy, right? And we start to go left and right and up and down and it just gets really crazy. We don't know what to do. Well, and slowly when we're filled with joy, we start to calm down. We get to stay still. <laughs> that guy's having a little rough time. <laughs> Let me help him out a little bit. And when we are filled with Jesus, everything calms down and we're able to stand right back up. It doesn't matter if everything's calm, it doesn't matter if we're happy, it doesn't matter if it's crazy and everything is going wrong. Eventually, if we choose Jesus and focus on his joy, we go back to normal. So remember guys, joy is powerful and we find joy when we focus on Jesus. And how do we focus on Jesus? There's many things we can do. We can read the Bible, we can read like Philippians, as I mentioned earlier, or John or Matthew or any book of the Bible. That's how we can focus on Jesus. Or we can pray. I know we talked about prayer a little while ago. Or we can choose to worship. Or even just like walk our dog and just talk with Jesus. The possibilities are endless. All you guys need to know is to focus on the Lord. And when we focus on the Lord, we choose joy. So what's joy all about? It's about focusing on Jesus and remaining in his love. I hope you guys have a good week.